Hi friends, happy Friday. It's Quenby, the Grateful Queen here on YouTube and it's Friday and every Friday on the channel, we go live. I call it a reseller community night. It's an opportunity for resellers, people who sell online to get together and talk about all things reselling. We love to talk about buying wholesale and shopping at shopgoodwill.com and buying from ThreadUp and going thrift store shopping and how sales are going on all the different platforms on which we sell. So I'm happy that you are here and that you're joining us. I see some friends coming into the live chat. I'm so happy to see you. Definitely make sure you say hello in the chat. And if for some reason you happen to be new here and you found us on the Friday Night Live, welcome. I'm Quenby. I'm a part-time reseller. I've been reselling on eBay for over nine years and Poshmark about two years. It's a part-time job that I love and I'm very passionate about and I share all about it on the channel. So you're going to find plenty of thrift hauls and flea market hauls and tons of unboxings. I love mystery boxes, so I do a lot of Jomar Wholesale unboxings and Shop Goodwill unboxings and Thread Up, anything that I can unbox, I absolutely love. So please make sure you're subscribed and that you like the video and join in the chat. We'd love to have you. If you are in the chat, I'm so glad you're here, friends. Welcome. I would love to hear from you about how things are going in the world of reselling for you. What are you focused on? What are you working on? Are there any challenges for you right now in the reselling world? The world of selling online for profit on eBay and Poshmark and Mercari and Depop and what are all the other ones? Kitizen and all that. What's going well for you? And is there anything you're kind of challenged with right now? Anything you're thinking of doing differently in your reselling business? Anything that you want to ask questions about? We would love to hear from you. I pay a lot of attention to the chat and I want to hear from you about what you want to talk about this evening. I always come with many things that I want to talk about. And um, gosh, just being here with you is making me so happy because I was feeling a little tired and a little cranky today. Um, and then I said to myself, but you have the live at five and you're going to get to be with your friends and your community and talk. And I bet you, you're going to perk up and look, I'm perked up. So thank you for being here. I see so many good friends, which makes me do the Friday live shoulders. PD from the other room, will you let me know how we are doing with sound and technology? And I'm going to say hi to some friends. And then what should we talk about reselling? I've got a lot of things on my list. As usual, my friend Holly gets the gold star for being here first, ready to go. And she says, I am stuffing my face. Got a deep eddy. Arn Arnold Palmer standing by. P.S. Shipped has been a lifesaver for me with COVID and my bad times. Um, sending some strength and love to Holly. I know she's having some physical issues right now. I don't know what Shipped is, so you'll have to educate me. Heidi is here from Restyle Secrets. Always so good to see you. Heidi, what is going on in your world? I know you made a shift recently and you, you just said, I'm just selling on eBay. Have you stuck with that? And how's that going? And was it a good move? I'll be honest with you guys, the last two Fridays, everybody came and said my eBay sales are slow. And I was like, huh, that's not happening to me personally, but there are definitely ebbs and flows and that happens. And then last weekend, I had like one of the worst weekends that I've had. I sold four items on eBay the whole weekend. So I was like, oh gosh, I better look at how things are going on eBay. What can I do? What can I change? But then like it always does, usually in about a week, It'll turn around no matter what. And I've had, a, I had a good Friday, a good kind of the rest of a good week. So fingers crossed for a decent weekend. Karen is here. Hello. Glad I made it. Missed everyone last week. I know I was wondering what you're up to. If you ever miss and you feel inspired and you want to come find me at the Grateful Queen on Instagram and say, oh, sorry, I missed it. Um, this is why I wasn't here because otherwise I kind of go, oh, I hope they're okay. And if I can, if I do, I try and check in with people, but always feel free to reach out. Um, I know like Birdie Looks, who's always here every Friday, Nicole messaged me and said she can't be here tonight. She has a family concert. Hopefully she's watching the replay. And um, Sarah Lee Coleman is here. Hi from a bright day in the Capitol Hill neighborhood of Seattle. Yay. So are the oh, skies clearing up there here in Santa Rosa, California, we've had blue skies for a couple of days. So after all the wildfire stuff, 
just walking and not being able to see the hills by my house. And the gray was hard in so many ways, but it has been blue again. I'm extremely thankful for that. Dresden Avenue is here. Hi, everyone. Hi, it's my first time here. I saw you last night on Leslie's A Reseller's Passion. She, I'm not sure if she's here yet. She usually drops in when she can. And I was on Leslie's show. You can find her at A Reseller's Passion. Probably all of you are already huge Leslie fans, but she had me on and I got to talk about my other channel, The Grateful Therapist, was is a new channel for me, a new project all about mental health and personal growth. And um, so it was a great talk. And I, I, you, I just appreciate what Leslie's up to. What a cute picture. So, so thank you so much for coming over. And I see lots of great comments. I'm going to go back and um, follow up with these comments. I just want to make sure I say hi to everybody. Lisette is here. Happy Friday, my beautiful people. Lisette. How are things going with you? How's the family? What's happening in your reselling world? Have you sold many mystery boxes? Lisette is Posh is my purpose. Posh is my purpose on Poshmark. And she often has mystery boxes. They're a great price and people are really happy with them. So if you're in the market, definitely check her out. Debbie Whitehead is here saying hello, everyone. Always good to see you, Debbie. And Michelle, who I also saw... Happy Friday, friends, with some hearts. I saw her on Leslie's channel last night. So you guys are getting like double Wemby, which is like a lot for anybody. But um, we had a great talk over there. Babette Sabol is here. Happy Friday, everyone. How are things going with you, Babette? See if my mom, Babette, the grateful Babette, is hopefully going to join us. I talked to her today. Hey. I think I'm back, a little blip, our first one of the night. Let's see how we do. But um, my mom might be coming over to dinner here. Um, we haven't seen her because of social distancing and everything. But we're going to maybe eat outside. And um, I was thinking maybe on Sunday I could get her to come on for a little bit. If she's up for it, we could do a little hello and you could meet the grateful Babette, my mom. We'll see if she's up for it. But if she is, maybe I'll see you guys for a quick hello on Sunday. Wouldn't that be fun? Michelle is here. Debbie is here. Stephanie Benmanson made it. Hey, Quenby and other peeps. So good to see you, Stephanie. What's going on with you in the world of reselling? Tell me a little bit about where you sell, what you're selling, what's selling for you guys right now. What are you buying for the next quarter? How are you preparing for it? And Christy Blocker is here. Hey, family, what's going on? I learned that Christy lives in Philly near Joe Mar which is like, I'm such a Joe Mar, like I'm just like loving the Joe Mar wholesale right now. So that's exciting. We know our friend Leslie got to go on a tour over there. So um, yeah, I ordered another Joe Mar box. If you don't know, there's a wholesale company called Joe Mar Wholesale. I have several unboxings on my channel already from stuff that I bought from them. I have a 10% off link use it. I'm really happy with the stuff that I'm getting there. That's why I'm telling you about it. I just ordered another box myself. Um, let's talk more about that after I say hi. Eyelid Dreams reseller is here. Hello. How is it going? And Kelly Schaffner. Gosh, I've had such a good time watching Kelly Schaffner's videos over there. Um, she's got so much fun stuff on her channel. What did I miss? Hello, all. So glad to see you. I don't think you missed a thing. I'm just doing my babbling. Um, the 10 minutes of saying hi to everyone. We have 29 friends watching already. Thank you so much for joining us on Friday. We always have a good time. We talk about anything and everything. So don't hesitate to introduce yourself in the chat. Just if you haven't chatted before, just say, hi, this is who I am. This is where I sell. We would love to welcome you and include you. Um, Lisette, Lisette, I'm so glad Lisette's here. And James is here. Hi, y'all, the Antique Boutique. What is happening with you, James? Any great sales? Last week you were telling us about that Lululemon bag flip and I was envious. I ordered two more pairs of Lululemon pants for myself um, recently and they're so nice because I put a top on and some jewelry when I'm doing something on video, either seeing some of my clients in my psychotherapy practice 
or making a video. And then I just have my yoga leggings on the bottom like at all times. I don't know what I'm going to do if I have to go back to like getting dressed. Like I often would wear like a really nice pair of jeans. I, I wear a lot of linen pants, but if I wear jeans, I wear like a nice dark wash skinny jean and a nice blouse for work. Um, and I don't think I can fit in those skinny jeans again. Like <laughs> not right now, the way things have been going. So I'm going to have to do some things if I decide I'm going to put pants on. And I got my party shoulders. I hope you guys are doing them at home. Like if you're at home and you're just sitting there and your family's watching, like, what is she doing? What is he doing? Just do your party shoulders and blame it on me. Miss Aweb. Hey girl. Sales have been really amazing for me the past two weeks. It will probably taper off though, because I'm going on vacation and it won't, and won't be as consistent. You know, I, um, I, I sell on eBay and Poshmark. I tend to leave my stores open um, and not put them on like vacation mode if I'm just going for like five or sometimes even seven days. And so I've still made sales, but yeah, Mike, it might be a little tapering off. Like if you don't list all week, you could schedule them if you're really like hardcore. And I know um, Poshmark, is that right, you guys? Am I remembering this right? I know. I think I heard something about Poshmark having a vacation setting change. Oh no, it's eBay, it's eBay. So eBay put out their seller update recently. I've been pouring over that. One of the great changes they made on eBay, which I'm so thankful for, is the vacation setting where it will, um, it used to be that if you had your vacation settings on and you didn't change your shipping time, you could get dinged for not shipping out on time. Like if you're on vacation for a few days and you don't ship out in your one or two business days, but now you can adjust, they, they will not ding you for that. They're going to take that into account. So that is awesome. Thank you, eBay. Uh, there's some other changes in there. If anyone wants to highlight any of the other changes that came out, in the eBay um, update, let us know. We can talk about that. Here's my Peter. Peter Newman, hi all. The video and sound is good. Thank goodness. Oh, here's Leslie. I'm glad she probably just heard me talking about her for the last five minutes. Happy Friday, everyone. I hope you are having an awesome day. I had awesome moments in the day and I had hard moments in the day. I am, I am you know, doing like many of us are, social distancing, just one kid, but trust me, my nine-year-old Torvald, many of you know him in his energy level, that's enough, and working in my reselling business and working on YouTube videos and learning as a psychotherapist how to switch my entire private practice to video therapy. So it's like having a new job, you know, where I'm like relearning um, and I'm learning everything and it's a challenging time in that way. So I had moments of overwhelm today and stress today and I had some sweet moments with Torvald and I had some moments of gratitude and I had some moments of irritation and I had moments of worry and moments where I just felt like things were okay. And that's kind of how it goes for most of us. There is a normal, healthy range of moods that we all go through. What we get better at, many of us, as we become more mindful and mature is just like watching the, mood, the moods kind of float by and be like, yeah, it's just a mood. I don't need to get so attached to it. It's just, you know, things pass and come and go. Okay, did I say hi to many of my friends? Because there's some good stuff in here that I'm going to go back up. I see lots of great comments. I'm thankful for that. My friend Lissette reminding you to hit the thumbs up. That helps my channel with engagement. Seek Joy is here. I'm here, Quemby. Happy Friday, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. And Sherla is here. Hey, I'm there. Thank you for letting me know you're there. Some of you, it's like you might be taking photos in the background and, and listening in the background, or you might be doing the thing that I kind of loathe the most. I'm looking at it right now, actually, across from me. I bag my inventory and put it away. So it has to be folded, bagged, and put away. And I will let like three or four bins stack up before I'll do it because for some reason, I always think there's like something else I should be doing that's more important. <laughs> you know, it's not like you make money doing that. It's just one of those jobs that has to be done. I have shareless comment up here and I cannot find it now. Oh, there it is. Oh my gosh, there's just so much I missed. Okay, I'm going to move right along. And then we have, oh, Lindsay made it. How's it going, Lindsay? Lindsay's Posh Loft is here. She has had some like really great sales. She'll sometimes share. Um, she sells some cool designer things sometimes, higher end. Go out too. 
second blip of the night my screen went out is that happening for you guys does the sound go out too should i just talk over it um debbie r is here hey debbie hi quenby and everyone oh and ruth rodriguez we've got some great friends in the chat hi everyone from new hampshire ruth did we already talk about this that i am from massachusetts from the boston area my sister lives in new hampshire um, my family is still back on the East Coast in the Massachusetts, New Hampshire area. So usually I go every single year to the East Coast. I spend about two weeks visiting family. There are some resellers on the East Coast, like Lisette, like Lori's Boston Found. I think Leslie might be a little too far away in Philly, but there's some people in Massachusetts, New Hampshire that I thought if I went, I could visit them and that would be amazing. But this year with COVID, no traveling for me. Barbara, but bosh, Barbara's in the house, she says. Barbara is in the house. What's happening, Barbara? You've often, like last week, you were having a good shoe sale or something, or how did that go? Oh my gosh, you guys are having some great chat. Here is another friend. Hello, happy Friday. Cynthia. Cynthia, that is awesome. Cynthia is here. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Good to have you. And Deborah Anderson. Okay, okay. My first Joe Mar box arrived today, shipped in a kosher supermarket box. Odd, that is odd. Two of the items are super stained with what I can pray is only chocolate. You know, I had something, um, which remind me, Deborah, which box you got? Was it the Target warm weather one like I got? I did, um, so on Joe Mar's website, when you buy a wholesale lot of multiple items, they usually tell you that you can expect about a 15% defect rate and that's usually true. I did have something. Maybe we should write them a little note because I had something that I, when I did my unboxing, I got a white fleece and on it was new with tag. And on the back, there was something on that looked just like chocolate. And I said in the video, is that chocolate? I took a baby wipe, like a, a baby wipe and just wiped it, came right out. So hopefully that's the, the um, situation there. But let me know, Deborah, what's your reaction of the box? Um, I like to give really honest reviewed. Oh my gosh, Alicia's here from Murray Life. Please be jogging. I know. Sometimes I'm like, should I smell it? Like, <laughs> what is it? And I think that it probably is. Um, oh my gosh, Leslie says, if I, oh, hi, Cindy Pierce with her fish. You got to tell the story of that giant fish in there. And, and, um, Leslie says, if I went to Massachusetts, she would drive down. Now that's probably, how many hours would that be? You're good at that, though. You're so good at, like, meetups and stuff. I know I kind of thought Posh Fest this year was going to be, like, the meetup where I finally met people in person because this is my first year, like, on the scene, like, connecting with resellers and making friends. I never knew this existed before. I wasn't on Instagram. My YouTube, I didn't know anybody. And so I thought this year, Posh Fest, I'm going to go, even as an introvert with a little bit of anxiety, I'm going to go and try and connect um, with everybody and meet in person. And then it's an online Posh Fest. Who here is doing Posh Fest online? I missed the whole thing. So I know tickets sell out and I didn't get one. And I'll be watching all the videos you put up and Instagram stuff about it. And I definitely plan to be there when it's in person. Okay, I think I've said hi to most of my friends and now I wanna go up and see what I miss. Oh, Deborah Anderson says it was the basic brands, new with tag, women's 20 pieces. What's in the basic brands? I just ordered another Jomar box. Um, and I, this time I ordered the women's mature brands and they said it's things like J. Jill, Chico's, Eileen Fisher. And you guys know that is right up my alley. Like that is, that is what I'm looking for. And I chose this time to get a pre-owned box because when I got the men's Joe Mar box of pre-owned items, there were amazing brands in there, amazing stuff. So I'm kind of hoping like, are they getting some good inventory in for pre-owned? Will I get some good stuff? I'm really happy with what I got so far. Definitely check it out and definitely use my link so you get a discount. I love that everyone is saying hi to everyone else. Like we're used to seeing each other here and everyone's like, hello, Michelle. Hello, Lisette. That's awesome. Okay, I'm going back up because there's some good content and I don't want to miss anything. But whoa, you guys are really chatting. Um, 
Debbie says, hi, Quimby. I'm packing up some eBay sales while I watch. Great to be here. That is a fantastic idea. Um, and Islet Dream says, selling long sleeve tops, sweaters, cardigans, and a bit of everything else. Must list the bins of the bins of boots and winter type shoes. I know, I know. That's what I'm trying to do is get my stuff up. I have almost so I got that tar that Joe Mar Target winter weather fleecy teddy coat box. When was that, you guys? Like three weeks ago, maybe. I just I don't even have it all listed yet, but a lot of it. So I'll let you know how that stuff does. My my Victoria's Secret box, I've sold. I'm slow to get things listed, so I'm not going to be someone who's going to be able to help you with data around, like, how quick does it sell? I'm really not a quick mover. I just plug along and do what I can. Um, but I've sold a bunch of that Victoria, Victoria's Secret stuff, and my cost of goods, I can't remember what it was. It was just a couple dollars an item, and I'm selling that stuff for, like, $15, $18 range, which is what I thought for pre-owned Victoria's Secret pink. How do you guys do with that brand? But Bet says, I'm working mandatory overtime in my regular job and still trying to keep three platforms going. I've never been busier. I'm grateful. Wow. Mandatory overtime in your regular job. I don't know what I'd say. I See, I work for myself and I have for so long. If someone said mandatory overtime, I'd be like, uh-huh. I don't like that idea of mandatory. But maybe you're, do you make more money or are you salary? And it is a lot. Many of us right now are juggling a lot. I get a chance to talk to many of you here on YouTube, on my other channel. When people come over to The Grateful Therapist, because that is like personal growth content and mental health, people share with me a lot more over there. So I'm getting to hear a lot of what you guys are going through. And many of us in our reselling community are also struggling with all sorts of things. Maybe you have kids at home. Maybe you're caring for a parent. Many of us have um, chronic pain conditions. Many of us have mental illness issues, anxiety, some depression. You know, um, a lot of us have a lot of things going on and we're trying to run a successful reselling business and make money. It is a lot to juggle and I don't think anybody has it all figured out. I think most of us feel like there are times where like, wow, we're in our flow. We're doing great. We're, we're listing, we're selling. And there are times where it's like, I can't do anything else. I just need want to go back to bed or I need another espresso or a nap. I mean, I think, I think a lot of us um, are, are, have a lot of struggles going on right now. So you are not alone in that, my friends. Let's see. Okay, yes. Restyle Secrets. I left all other platforms a month ago. eBay sales are up 30%. It's focus. Yeah. So that's working for you. When I look at like my weekly or monthly sales, they are up. But I know like last week that my last weekend was not good. And I am listing every day consistently five to 10 items more if I can do it. So it's not about consistent listing. I am having some challenges in the world of eBay returns. So I am taking time to think about what I want to do with that. Many of you know that I've, I've been selling on there nine years and I've always accepted returns with buyer paid shipping if it's like for doesn't fit. If I make a mistake, obviously I, I'm not going to charge them shipping. It's my fault. But mo the majority of my returns have always been does not fit or they don't like the fit. And I was losing a lot of money on shipping for those things. I sell clothes. People who sell women's clothing especially often have about a 3% return rate. And um, I didn't want to deal with all the returns. I was struggling back and forth. And many friends said, well, I, I selected does not accept returns on eBay. So for the first time in nine years, I've started doing that. I don't know how long it's been. I want to say it's been at least a couple few months of me not accepting returns. And that's fine. But the thing that I'm noticing that's happening now more than before, and I want to hear your thoughts on this. If you're an experienced eBay seller or you sell on eBay and you have experience with this, please chime in. It'd be a great conversation. And this could be relevant no matter what platform you sell on. I'm speaking of eBay, but it could be whatever platform you're on. But what's happening now that's very interesting is I am having what people are doing, what buyers are doing is, is putting item not as described. And then what they're putting is, this happened to me this week with a dress. She said this is an X large. It is an extra large, but it can't be. <laughs> So instead of saying doesn't fit or return for size, 
she put she said it's an x-large which all the tags show but it can't be <laughs> i'm like okay and i've had another several others like that where what people are choosing to do now because i don't accept returns is saying item not as described and as you know that's not good for your ebay seller account right so now i'm thinking should i just put the returns back on and 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 stick with the philosophy i've always had oh look at this a super chat from lisette Hello, Quimby. I don't know where it is. It's on the top, but it's probably down here. I'm like, I need someone to do the chat for me. Maybe I can train Torbo. Hello, Quimby. Just wanted to ask everyone to head over to Leslie's YouTube channel. She only needs 700 hours to be monetized. I bet it's less now. Yes. Everybody is probably subscribed, but if you're not, head over to A Reseller's Passion. Her content is unbelievably inspiring and educational, and she's she is like killing it in the YouTube and that it's only been a few months that she already got her thousands. But if you don't know, you need 4,000 watch hours, which is crazy. Um, so go on over there and watch. Today, I just had it playing and I, I rewatched our show from last night and then I just kept it playing. So that's something you can do that doesn't cost you anything, guys. If you want to help out a YouTube reseller, just play their stuff in the background. Watch the commercials, like the videos, leave comments. That's really helpful for us. So do it. Um, I just want to point out Sarah Lee Coleman. Um, I really love following her on Instagram. Go over there and find her. She's been taking a lot of pictures of her vintage and antique finds that she sells. And um, I really love looking at that. Let's see. Dresden Avenue says, my husband works at the post office. He worked mandatory overtime all summer. Oh, so I get it if it's something like that. 20. I'm going to just babble because I don't know if the sound goes out when the picture does. Do you guys know? Um, if we can deal with it, we'll deal with it. But if it gets too bad, you just let me know. Um, Where did I do with that comment? There it is. So uh, one day off and 20 more days. And is that a picture of you with a baby there? So are you saying that your your husband was working? Were you like home with the babies and having to do all that? And he had to work so much. Oh, I'm, that sounds stressful to me. I mean, you do what you got to do, but that's hard. You know, many of us are working so hard. Um, now, what is Mari? Oh, Alicia, and I know you all follow her too, but definitely head over to her channel, Murray Life. She's one of my faves because she's so cute with her Southern accent, great positive attitude, and she does a lot of different stuff too. Um, and she gets to go to the bins and her stuff is so inexpensive at the thrift stores that I'm always like, how does she get it so cheap? My stuff's so expensive here in California. So expensive. I was telling Leslie last night on our show, um, when I was on Leslie's show and I was telling her, yeah, um, at the Goodwill and Salvation Army and stuff here, the prices are like this. Um, dresses, $10, jeans, $10, um, women's um, long sleeve tops, $7, skirt, $7. And they do not do like 50% off a color tag sale where I am. So um, it's rough. It's tough try and find good stuff. That's why I love my mystery boxes because when you get a good mystery box from ThreadUp or Jomar and your cost of goods is one to four dollars or something like that, it's a great way to get inventory for someone like me who lives in California where cost of living is extremely high. I'm in Sonoma County, California, wine country. So one of the benefits, if you drink wine like I do, you get amazing local wines inexpensively, but um, costs are high. And Alicia says, I do great with pink, but I won't pay a ton for it. Neither would I. I can't remember. Well, I want to say it was $1.90 I paid each piece because I got a big lot from Jomar Wholesale of Victoria's Secret pink. And so selling, if I pay like a couple bucks, I'll sell that stuff for 15 bucks all day long. Flip it, flip it quick. Easy, lightweight to ship out. Easy to photograph those tops. People are happy with it. No problem. Uh, James says, I need to get rid of inventory more than anything. I have a ton. Maybe you need to do one of those like listing challenges. A lot of people are doing that. I think Holly was maybe going to do one. Did I see that on Instagram, Holly? Like sometimes it's like you got to sit and list. Um, Holly says, mandatory overtime is normal for first responders. Yeah. So I get that. Yeah, that makes sense. 
And Leslie says, I just ordered another vintage box and a Target Pulls box from Jomar. My sales have been great with their products. Yeah, Leslie and I are like on the Jomar wagon right now. Quimby, are you going to use reels on Instagram? I do not know what that is. I would like to know what that is. I was talking to Leslie last night and I was so inspired by her because she's really using Instagram strategically for her business to connect with people and build relationships, which she's so good at and also for business. And I don't know much about that. I'm on there and um, I try and upload stories and let you guys know when I have a new video or and, and connect with you guys, but I'm not, I don't, I think I could be using it more strategically. I'm hoping that Leslie is going to come out with another ebook or course on that. That is if you are looking to grow to sell more Social media is a great way in 2020 and Instagram. There's a lot of opportunity there. I can, I can think of some of the ways I've used it, but I'm not an expert. Some people are, and I don't do TikTok. I am really like, it is a miracle that I can make a video, edit it and post it and do a live show. Um, I have a lot of room to grow there. So let's, you know, I found you. James says, but Oh, you guys are following each other now. That makes me like so happy. Miss A. Webb says, my nine to five job is more like an eight to seven job these days, plus reselling on top of that, living on very little sleep, but happy I'm seeing payoff and reselling. Yep. I'm telling you guys, like things are challenging right now. People are working hard. People are juggling a lot. And that's, you know, I don't really working for myself. I'm in private practice as a psychotherapist. I work for myself, self-employed and same thing with reselling. And I do not count hours. I'm not like, oh, I put this many hours in or how many hours do you put in? I just work when I want to work, when I can work. I probably work way more hours, but I like work. Like, And reselling work is enjoyable for me. I like thrifting. I like photographing. I just like it. And so I don't care how many hours I work as long as it works in my life. And I don't tend to compartmentalize my life from work. Like, and I know some people do. And if that's what works for you, I totally support it. Like some people do not work on the weekends. That's family time. That's great. If that's for you, for me, um, I like the freedom and flexibility to work when I want, not work when I want. And I work a lot and it, it's, um, part of my, the fabric of my life. I mean, I also spend a lot of time with my partner, Peter and my son Torvald and I, I, I do a lot of different things, but I don't separate it out. It's just all my life. Um, and that works for me. Let's, oh, hello, Bella, new friend. I'm not, item not as described so much on Amazon or they choose item did not arrive in time, which is never true. So it's frustrating. I add all those customers to my blocked buyer list on eBay. I've never used the blocked buyer list. Um, so in the past, what my policy in nine years of reselling has been is returns happen. Don't get caught in any drama of it. Don't be emotional about it. It's business. Just say accept return and move on with your life. Don't argue with customers about it. Many customers have always, they know they have to pay shipping if they say does not fit or didn't arrive on time or something like that. And they're going to manipulate that. Some of them are going to fine. I don't want to, um, I don't want to have that like, for me, I just don't, I don't want to get in. It's just not worth it. It's not worth it kind of like emotionally, energetically. That has been my strategy. So this is a new thing I've been trying out where I've said no returns and I've tried to have conversations with customers. And I just feel like it takes too much time and energy. I'm thinking I'm leaning towards, I might go back to just accepting returns. And, and because for me, the like having to talk it out with a customer about whether I'm going to accept a return. And I, and they'll say things that aren't necessarily true sometimes because when it comes to money, people get emotional about it. It's hard for them. Fine. No judgment. Um, I don't know that I want to get into that sticky business with people around reselling. I mean, it was easier when I just accepted all the returns and I probably lost some money over it, but I didn't lose any sleep over it. I didn't get aggravated over it. I just did it. And now I'm starting to get aggravated because people are doing some things that are not an in integrity. And it's like, well, you know, should I fight for my 10 bucks? Should I say, Hey, that's not true. I just don't even want to get into it with people. What do you guys think? Some of you experienced sellers, tell me what you think. Um, I just missed a comment from Alicia that I wanted to, um, it just went so quick and blipped right by. But I think she said something like that. 
that was happening to her last week. Oh, Bora Bora Jen made it. No color tags in San Diego either. You know, Goodwills, I don't know who can educate us about how Goodwill works. Like, it's different in different cities. It's different, like some other areas, the Goodwill still has half off tags or color tags. In my area, none. January 2019, that started zero sales and no sales and everything's marked up. It's just like, ugh. Um, but good news, I couldn't wait to share this with you guys. Those of you who have been following me since COVID, I had not gone thrifting since March. So that was six months of zero thrifting, of only ordering things online. I have a box of one, two, three, four packages stacked right here. I thought it might be fun if anyone's interested to show you what's arriving at my house on a daily basis as I buy all my inventory online. But the thrift, a few thrift stores are open. In Santa Rosa, California, finally a few thrift stores are open. So I did a little thrifting and I did a ton of video about it. So I'm going to do like a, a thrifting vlog and share that with you guys and share with you what I got. And some of you will still be dismayed at my prices because it's usually more than where you guys are. Okay, let's see. I love that you guys are just chatting, chatting, chatting. Isla Dream says, while raising three boys, daily naps saved me for a while. While the baby napped and the kids at school, I was also eating healthfully and losing 30 pounds of baby weight. Had my last son at 37. Yeah, I had my son at 30. I was 35 when I got pregnant. I think I was still 35 or 36, which is, if you don't know, considered advanced maternal age. And when I had a baby, oh, I slept all the time. I, whenever he slept, I slept. But these days, I have so much I want to accomplish in a day, and I'm so excited about all of it. I love making videos. I love editing them. I love connecting with you guys. I love my work as a psychotherapist. I'm, I'm really excited about my work, and sometimes I don't let myself slow down to take a nap. I probably should. I think it's healthier. Um, honestly, I'm just probably not doing really well with that. Okay, you guys are chit chit chatting. Oh, and I missed all this up here. Okay, I'm moving along. Did anyone answer that about whatever Reels is on Instagram? And some people said that on Instagram, video was going to start being monetized at some point. Um, like eBay, does like YouTube? Does anyone have any um information on that? I have my ticket to Posh Fest, and I'm really hoping there's going to be some good info since I've only been on Posh since last Christmas. Awesome. Will you let me know and keep me posted? Ooh, Barbara Babash, I received a 15-piece thread of jewelry box, and it was fabulous. Yay! Kate Spade ring, Tory Burch earrings. Wow, Anna Beck earrings in a Heltzberg ring. I'm not familiar with some of those. I only have got one or two... Um, thread up jewelry boxes and mine were not good. That is the way it is with mystery boxes. Some people get a great box and your box stinks and you're like, Ugh. but um, just keep trying. And I've sold some jewelry. I don't feel like I know enough about jewelry in the world of jewelry. There are so many keywords um, to learn the shapes of pendants, the names of stones, the type of clasp. And I love jewelry. Um, but I don't know quite enough. I sell it. I bought a few lots on shopgoodwill.com and I sell that stuff, you know, every once in a while, just a tip in case you want to get into jewelry. If it has a name brand tag, it is so much easier to sell or if you know something about that, the item. My mom is here. Her comment came in like 20 minutes ago and I'm just getting to it. <sighs> Barbara, wouldn't it be something to meet up with some of your New England friends next summer? Talk about having something to look forward to. I know my mom usually travels with me every summer to the East Coast. And, um, you know, it's it's hard for us not to go this year. But that would be cool. I would love to meet other resellers. Alicia says, I'm not doing virtual POS Fest. I was looking forward to an person event since it was my first full year being with the community. Me too. That's exactly my sentiment, Alicia. I was like, Miss A Web has her tickets. I'm probably going to get FOMO. That's what happened to me last year. I was totally new on the scene and I didn't even really know what Posh Fest was. I didn't know that many people. And I was like, should I just go? Should I just dive in? But I couldn't pull the plug because I think it was in Arizona or something. I'd have to fly and I just didn't know. But this year I was like, I'm going. I'm definitely going. Um, and then it's only online and I don't really want to do that. But, um, you know, whatever works for you. 
Oh, oh, Leslie's given some advice um, about how to negotiate when you get something from Jomar or any wholesale place. Always communicate with them. Usually, I, I people have been so receptive. Ooh, there's all these new comments. Christy Blocker does have her tickets to Posh. Oh, I know. I'm going to be like, oh, maybe I should have done it. But I can't do anything else online. I, my whole life is online right now. Like, <sighs> Isla Dream says, I don't laugh, at, I don't nap anymore either, and totally get that you don't. It's so great that you're enjoying so many facets of life, not enough hours in the day. That's the way I feel. That is the way I feel. James says, I'm going to be the first next year. This year didn't happen. Yeah, hopefully next year it'll be in person, you guys. Barbara says, just bought a vintage Sears floral quilted snap 1970s bathrobe <laughs> but it has that old smell so I'll be hanging it outside for a bit did you buy it to resell is there a market for that do you do a lot of vintage Barbara yeah that's my trick to like anything that just doesn't smell so great like especially when I was selling a lot of shoes wash those babies out leave them out in the hot sun all day and it's like it's the best Oh, Leslie says Reels is Instagram version of TikTok. Is that what I'm seeing where everyone's doing the thing where like they're there and they say they point, point to something and point to something else and point to something else? I like those things. I like those little clips that everyone's are doing. So maybe it's that. How do you guys find the time to do all these things? Let's see. Okay, so Reels is like TikTok, everyone's saying. Okay. I'll Google it. See, I'm telling you, every single thing that I have to do that's new like that, I just Google. And there's someone has a video on it. Someone has information. People will sometimes on Instagram message me and say, how do you do um, this on YouTube? I'm like, I don't know. Every time I have to do it, I just Google it and let it talk me through step by step. <laughs> I'm 44. And I totally, I totally kind of checked out when people my age we're, we're first getting smartphones and doing everything. I was living in some yoga ashrams up in the Santa Cruz mountains and in Big Sur, California. And so people my age were probably getting into all that. And I just didn't. I mean, I didn't even get a smartphone until like, God, was Tor Torvald? I was like one of the last people. People are like, okay, Quimby, enough with the flip phone. I was so afraid that I would become one of these people with the phone in front of my face all the time. Like I read a lot actual books with pages and it's like if I went somewhere and there was a line I brought a, I always had a book in my purse and it's like where everyone else has the phone like this you go to any family event the phone like this like everywhere you go the phone like this and I I admit I've become one of the people like that that I kind of didn't want to become sometimes like we have certain rules like at dinner time the phone is not even close where you can look and look it's too tempting the phone is not at the table there are certain things like that. Some people have a really smart rule that I have not done, which is like, don't bring the phone into the bedroom. Um, and especially when you run an online business it's and you communicate with clients or your business, you need that phone. I totally get it. But I was afraid of becoming one of those people. So I sort of bowed out of technology for a long time. Um, so I just feel like I'm sort of like a little handicapped because of that. But um, James says, reselling makes me happy, too. What's your favorite part, James? Like, what is your favorite part? Is it, like, photographing? Is it the thrill of the hunt at the thrift store, the estate sale, and finding something? Is it selling something to a customer that's, like, so happy to get your item? I don't know if you guys saw. Um, I put on Instagram that I sold, like, my favorite sweater of all time. It was this brand. Some of you probably saw it if you watched my video the brand is Storybook Knits, and they make these big oversized cardigans that have different themes with tons of embroidery and patches, and they're amazing. And this was a camping-themed sweater. It was like a plus size. Otherwise, I would have kept it. I looked on eBay and Posh. I can't find it. It's got like a big embroidered fish on the back, and it's got a lantern, like a big oversized sweater. It would look so cute with like a tank top and skinny jeans and some boots. I sold it. I bought a lot of seven Storybook sweaters from shopgoodwill.com. I think I paid, it was either five or $7 a sweater. It wasn't much. I've sold five out of the seven and they've all sold for $35 plus shipping. So that was awesome. And they're amazing. And anyway, I messaged her. 
Um, I commented on her Poshmark was like, I love this sweater so much. I was looking for it to my size. I hope that you love it. And she wrote back a nice story to me about, you know, she and her husband did a lot of camping together and that's how they met. And there may be an anniversary. I forget the whole long note. And I was like, I get a lot of joy out of that. Like when you sell something to a customer and you love the item or you know they're going to love. But what do you guys love about it? It's okay if what you love about reselling is just making the money. Or maybe it's working for yourself. But what is it really that you love? Oh, Hunter Ryan says, I have blocked two for spamming on my listings. One person, it was both of us thought the other was being a jerk. <laughs> I love Holly is like one of these super honest talkers. She just like owns her stuff. I just love it. And we actually ended up working it out and she bought it. And yeah, sometimes you work it out. I just, um, I don't know, working it out online. You have to admit it takes some energy, some time. I just don't know if I want to do it. Oh, let me see what people would say. You guys are chatting, chatting. I'm sure I missed all sorts of stuff. Oh, Holly says, I love the flamingo storybook sweater you got. If they these were like two or three X, so they none of them would fit me, but I was tempted to. The flamingo one was the first one that sold, and I was like, I am sorry to see that go. Keep your eye out. I mean, these have all sold for me. Um it could be because they were plus size. There's a lot of them on eBay. It's I think it's an eBay type item. Alicia Murray, I don't know if she's still here, but she said she had had one and it, and it was sitting and I'm like, is it on Posh or eBay? And she said, Posh. And mine have sold um, one. This one sold on Posh, but I think the others might have been eBay. I heard teachers collect them. It's called Storybook Knits. They're awesome. James says repurposing vintage items with today's fashions is a lot of fun too. Yeah, I don't do it. Bora Bora Jen says, I love finding something weird and knowing that it's money and it is. I know that's like, and it doesn't, I always thought for me, it had to be thrifting. Like I had to be out there flipping through the rocks and being tired. And then you get the item and you're like, oh my gosh. But I have the same joy when I get it in a mystery box. I don't know if you guys saw on my Instagram I got the men's Jomar box, pre-owned items, and I have two videos on it. I broke it into two. Watch those videos. The stuff I got in there, crazy. I just listed a pair of jeans by some Japanese designer, and um, they sold for $150 plus shipping in less than 24 hours, and guess what? I have another pair I haven't listed yet, and the box cost me $130 for 40 items. Like, that's just as satisfying for me than... than um, than going out and sourcing. Oh, you haven't sold yours yet, Alicia? You haven't had luck with mine yet? I, I put mine up there for like 50 bucks. And then I um, sent out offers or accepted offers. And the, the lowest I've sold them for is 35. Does yours have a ton of stuff going on the storybook knit? And is it on eBay? Because it needs to be. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's been 47 minutes. Time warp. My whole life is a time warp right now. But when I get on here with you guys and start chatting, it's like total time warp. If my mom's still here, Barbara, I need to get my mom a tablet or something. She's probably doing all this on her tiny phone. But do you want to come on on Sunday before dinner at like five and just like say hi to people that get to meet you? My mom, picture me. I mean, she has big red hair and she's teeny and and curvy and the best thrifter. I mean, we should do a tour of her apartment sometime. My mom, like, I, get, I probably learned everything I know about thrifting and uh, home decor and everything from my mom. She always had an antique booth growing up or worked at thrift stores and did the flea markets. So she's adorable, you guys. We would have fun. Isla Dream says, so thankful for this online life. It's such a blast and so much look forward to enjoy. You guys are my buds. You know, I'm so glad you said that because... I was taught, I was confessing to somebody recently. I'm like, you know what? There were times in my life where I had a lot of friends. Like when I was in graduate school, I had a whole group of graduate school friends and we'd get together for barbecues at my house or we'd meet at a coffee shop. And I had like, um, when I was a new mom, I had all these new mom friends and we'd get together at someone's house and we'd talk diapers and baby and sleeping. At this time in my life, I do not have a ton of friends around me by choice. I'm very introverted. I work a lot because I love working. I have a lot going on in my family. I just don't get together very much. And you know what? 
I was saying, but I have these online friends. I started this YouTube channel at a time in my life. I was going through a divorce. I was feeling like so many hard feelings and I wanted to connect with people and I wanted to do something I was afraid of for a long time and have a project that was just something for me. So I started the YouTube channel and I've made friends with you guys and my online friends, like my reselling friends, like you guys on this live. And when you comment on my videos over the week, um, like you guys, it is so fulfilling to me. Like it is just as meaningful to me, my friendships online connecting with you guys um, as it is like getting together with a friend for a coffee, it really works for me. Now that might not work for everybody. That might not be for you, but for me as an introvert, it is like fantastic. It's like, I get to connect on my own terms, you know? Um, I don't have to go out and go to parties all the time. I don't have to get together all the time and just feel like, oh, I can't wait to go home and read a book. Like it's fantastic. And and I really appreciate you all showing up on Fridays and, and reaching out to me and commenting on my videos and just being my reselling friend. It's amazing. And I get a lot out of it. Oh, whoa. Oh, no, I see a big no from James, but I'm missing. Bora, Bora, Jen, I'm too scared to try to channel. You know, um, it depends what it's about for you. Like, what is the fear about? Like, if you're just really not comfortable um, on the screen, then it might not be for you, but my fear was more about, okay, I'm going off on a tangent. Like I do one of those lifey ones. So tune out now if you're not into it, but if you are get ready. Um, so I read a lot of Brene Brown. Brene Brown has written many books. She's a researcher in the South. I want to say tech, she's in Texas and she researches as a sociologist, which was my undergrad. She researches things like vulnerability and shame and boundaries. I, as a therapist and as a human being, love boundaries and vulnerability. Vulnerability is important as a human being. You, Like Leslie always says, if she's still here, she's saying amen right now. Stepping out of your comfort zone as a human being is important and necessary if you want to have like a whole life where you feel like you're growing and um, being your best self. And um, there's a little bit of that excitement, fear, energy that comes when you try something new. If every time you are afraid, you say, stop, I'm not doing that, then you lead a very small life. But if you're willing to say, let me measure the risks, is this the right risk for me? And you're willing to take some risk and step out of your comfort zone and try something new, even though you're a little bit afraid, it leads to many positive things like great connections, like learning about yourself. You're going to mess up. You are going to fail. If you step out of your comfort zone, it's guaranteed. It's not like if it's when or how you're going to get negative comments. You're going to get people that thumbs down your video. You're going to get people that don't like what you do. And you're going to wonder if to use YouTube as an example, but this applies to anything. You're going to wonder why does my video only get 200 views and hers gets 6,000 views. Like, that's vulnerability and you have to reckon with that and you can choose to say, no, I'm afraid I'm not doing any of that. And there's times where that's appropriate, but there's times where you have to talk to your fear, fear and go, you know what? I appreciate that feedback fear, but I'm moving forward anyway, because I think ultimately there's opportunity for me here. So it's kind of what it's about for you, whether you want to start a YouTube channel or a new business or ask someone on a date or move or anything new, you kind of have to go, what's the fear really about? Is it this kind of like, is it just a warning zone? And for me, I was reading a lot of Brene Brown and she was doing an interview and she asked this question to the audience and said, um, what would you do if you weren't afraid of what people would say about you? Because that's often what we're afraid of. We're afraid of failing. We're afraid of negative feedback. And what bubbled up for me was, well, I'd start that YouTube channel. There, You know, there's, I've kind of wanted to do that, but I, you know, I don't know. And, and then I was like, okay, I need to do that then. So I just started a little bit at a time. YouTube is not for everybody. There's a lot more to it than people understand. But um, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, um, that's, that's where the conversation starts, I think. Let's see. Michelle says, I love that you and Leslie talk and encourage stepping out of your comfort zone. Yes. Now, I just want to say, don't don't um, overdo it. Like, you still need to have good boundaries. Stepping out of your comfort zone doesn't mean 
jumping off and making this big, huge decision and thinking the net will catch you because sometimes it doesn't. You still have to be a responsible adult and say, is this the right way to step out of my comfort zone? Am I just afraid or is there a real reason I shouldn't do this? Um, and don't think that just because you try something um, and step out of your comfort zone, it's going to be successful. It might not be. So um, you still have to measure the risks. Um, and see what is it about that makes me uncomfortable? Is it something there's a reason I shouldn't go there because I should just set the boundary and not do it? Or is it just fear that people are going to judge you or not like your stuff? Is it just that kind of fear? Because that stuff definitely push out of your comfort zone. But don't take any big risks that you cannot afford financially. Don't do any, you know what I mean? Uh, so you still need to be smart. Alicia says, I love your psychology channel. Thank you very much. It is a slow go over there. I've got 200 subscribers at The Grateful Therapist. I have like six videos. I'm allowing myself to go a little slower with that one because it's a lot to do a whole new channel, but I love it. And I hope to connect with you some over over there so we can talk about different things. If I wasn't afraid of what others would say, I would shave my hair off. Girl, that's a cool one. That's a cool one. So it's like, I would kind of look at that and be like, what is it real? You know, is it just what other people would say? Like, if that's the case, hmm, you know, let's see. Oh, I, oh, Risa and Wendy is here. It feels good to step out of my comfort zone. I was scared, but pushed myself. Yep. Certain things, then you do it and it's exhilarating. It's like, oh, I can do this, you know, like oftentimes we can do a lot more than we think we can. And it's just thoughts in our head. It's just our thinking. It's just our small thinking, our negative thinking. You know, all the thoughts you have in your mind are not necessarily true. They're just thoughts. That's what the brain and mind does. It thinks and thinks and thinks. It's kind of an it's an automatic process, just like many other things in our body. We breathe. We don't tell our body, let's breathe, let's breathe. It happens automatically. The brain and mind thinks thoughts automatically. They're not always true. Like, do not believe all your thoughts. Your job as a mature, responsible adult is to take a look at those thoughts and go, do these fit? Is this true? Do I think it's true? Is this real for me? You got to reckon with it a little bit. Like, all those thoughts, come on. Miss A. Webb says, I love being connected to the community, to have someone to talk to about this thing that I'm passionate about. Yes, about that most of the people in my life think's weird. Oh, I totally hear you. Like when I first started um, connecting with people about reselling, it was like I went on Instagram and there were people talking about exactly like reselling things that nobody else really understood. And, you know, you can see people's eyes gloss over reselling, thrifting, you know, if they're not into it, there's, you know, there's not, not, there's not a lot of interest usually. So to talk to people that like totally get it, that you can like post this amazing free people embroidered jacket, new with tags that you found for five bucks and other people are going to be like, yes, where a lot of people in your life would be like, okay, that's good. Ooh, my mom says, I would love to appear on your channel. She's been on some of my videos, but it's been a long time. It's been eight months, probably. She's on a couple of my thrifting ones. Oh, I can't wait to thrift again. I cannot wait. And now things, mom, I don't know if I told you, but there's a couple more thrift stores open in town. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we just got a blippy. How are people doing with time? I usually stop at the one hour mark, which is in a minute and 30 seconds, which is crazy. But we still have 45 friends here and the conversation is good. So let me know your timeline. We usually we usually wrap up. And if you need to, I uh, totally understand. Um, Barbara says, I challenge myself by shopping for 30 minutes and only spending $30. What? Wow. I mean, if I spend $30, I could get three pairs of jeans where I live. It's like, ah, that'd be so hard. There is a church thrift store I went to recently. I'm going to make a video about it. be out in the next week or so. Um, and they they still do, do colored tags. So I got some pants for like four bucks. For me, that's great. I did a video. This is like way back, six months at least. I More, probably eight or nine months with um, Tori from Girly Girl Style. And we did a thrift store challenge where we had 20 bucks in 20 minutes. 
And I went to a specific store. I drove because I needed to go to somewhere cheaper. So um, I've done that. I need to do some collab videos because I'm kind of um, bored of all the stuff I'm doing. <laughs> I do have, I don't know if you saw, I, I ordered this from shopgoodwill.com. I don't remember what it is. My Stitch Fix box is sitting here. So I did my first Stitch Fix unboxing and um, they, it was a pretty good box, but not amazing. And so um, they offered me another, a free style few wave. So I'm gonna open this one. I'm super excited about that. This is from Shop Goodwill. This is a piece of artwork. I buy a lot of artwork for my home on shopgoodwill.com because they have a ton of vintage. This is a hand um, knitted art farm scene hanging. Maybe I'll show it to you guys. And you know what this is down here? I finally got, how many of you shop on shopgoodwill.com? I source on there a lot for my business. It is tricky to do though. I have learned tips. I have videos about it. People message me and say the shipping is too high. People message me and say, how do you find those lots? Um, how do you make it affordable? I have videos about all that, but um, I'm happy to make an even clearer one, but I finally got a reseller mystery box. They forgot to ship it. So they have on there, if you go to shopgoodwill.com, Goodwill Online, and you type into the search bar reseller mystery box, they've only been on there a couple months maybe that I'm aware of. You can bid on these boxes. They usually go up to like 20 bucks plus shipping. So you're made maybe, and it's like 25 items, but you have no idea what's in there. They'll show you the top of the box. And you might look and be like, oh, those are some cute prints, or that looks like wool, or oh, that has Adidas on it. And you just bid on them, so it's a total mystery box. They forgot to ship it. I had to message them and say, hey, I paid for this like three weeks ago, so it finally got here, so I'm excited. But Beth says, I need to thrift tomorrow. Haven't been out for a while. It's therapeutic. What about it is therapeutic for you, Babette? I just love to hear. Like for me, I love thrifting, but I'll tell you this. So I went for the first time thrifting and I was in the store for like two hours. I was exhausted. I was like, when I got in my car, it's like my back was tired. Like it is physical. Like I'm so excited. So I think I override my body stuff, but I'm like, I'm hot. I'm tired. I'm hungry. Thrifting is a lot of work. Like reselling. I know it's fun and we love it, but who here thinks it's a lot of work? Like my experience of being a reseller is that it is a lot of work. It is hard work physically the time commitment I mean it's simple anyone can learn how to do it but it's a lot of work lugging my bins of clothing off my shelves to pull inventory or up and down the stairs at my house or in to be photographed like it's physically a lot of work don't don't kid yourself I mean it is Karen says I started selling on eBay and eBay first started and I made a fortune on Levi's I still do well with them but I love to wear them too oh my gosh when you find a good pair of Levi's that are like broken in perfectly, that medium or light wash. Um, actually, Levi's have been selling good for me too. I might have just slept on them for a while, but they're a consistent like 20 to 30 bucks. Leslie says, I'm going to order the men's box for Thomas from um, Joe Marr. But Beth says, I want to meet the other Babette. I know. Okay, so she's coming for dinner on um, Sunday. So look. If, if it works out and we can do it, I'll pop on. And um, I might not be able to give a ton of notice, but um, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And you guys, you have to hit the little bell. I didn't do this for the longest time because I didn't know. If you don't hit the little bell, you don't get the notification. And if you don't get the notification, the live video doesn't even come up for like 24 hours. So you'll miss the whole thing. You have to have the little bell turned on and be subscribed um, in order to know when I go live. And before I was doing a lot more pop-ups, I was trying to do like two a week. I've kind of been slacking since all this happened, but um, maybe we'll just come on with our wine and chit chat and um, you guys can ask questions. Michelle says, I love your Friday night lives, Quimby. You guys saved me tonight because I'll be honest, I was feeling super irritable today. It was just like the same, you know? Um, oh, yeah. So, but that meetup says Lisette. I, I appreciate Lisette so much. Um, what was I saying? Okay, let's see what this says. Oh, you guys are just chatting to each other. I don't have tickets because it was online. I didn't think it would, it would sell out. Yeah, about Posh Fest. Yeah. 
what is this Bora Bora that I missed? Too old and ugly. Is that your fear about the YouTube thing? Because I'll tell you right now, I might be, I didn't, I can't follow the whole conversation, but if anyone is thinking like you're not good looking enough to be on, on YouTube, that's silly because take a look, Re uh, search for reseller channels. If everybody's on there, old, young, thin, voluptuous, it's so diverse. And there are some big channels with people that are like so pretty and you're like, oh my God, of course she has 10,000 subscribers. She's so pretty. But there's people with huge channels that you may not consider attractive. So do not let that hold you back. As Leslie says, Bora, Bora Bora Jen, face your fear. I was there last year. Now I'm here this year with a successful YouTube channel. Step outside your comfort zone. Always get some wisdom from Lisette. Let me go down to the bottom and see, because I don't know where I am in this chat, to be honest with you guys. Um, Alicia says, I love sourcing so much. I do a minimum three hour trips, usually three hours. Well, you're 30 years old or 20. I always say 21 and you're like, no, I'm not. I'm <laughs> so I'm, now I'm saying 30, but I think it's like 24 or five. Um, but it's been my only stop outside the house for a whole week. Yeah. I'm, I'm still pretty strictly, um, social distancing over here. James says reselling is both physical and knowledge hustle. Not only do you need to put the time in, but you need to have to work smarter and know and read things that will sell to the public strategy and orchestration. I love James. I'm telling you, he always has really insightful comments and I agree with you hundred percent. I agree. And he also says, thanks to those who made purchases for me tonight, two inventory boxes and a t-shirt. I signed on feeling pretty down and you've all made me feel happy again. Oh, that's what I was talking about. I was just having like a, an off day. I woke up a little cranky. Thank God for my espresso mean machine. That's all I can say. The best gift I got, I asked Petey for Christmas, an espresso machine. I don't do as well with cup after cup of coffee. It hurts my stomach or something, but I can have a few espressos. I have the best machine. It's quick. You don't have to clean it. It's like amazing. And that gets me through like a little lift up. But I was feeling a little down today too. Like I just was in a funk, maybe a little tired. Uh, the third day of homeschooling, 12 in a row. You know, and it's Groundhog Day. Like I'm not, I'm not going on date night tonight. There's not many places to go. Like I was just feeling a little down. And sometimes when I'm feeling a little down, I'll think maybe I shouldn't do my live. But I've learned, like maybe I won't be good on the live or I won't be able to bring it the way I want to. But as soon as I get on here and I see you guys, I get a major energy, a major lift up. So I'm so glad you guys feel that way too, because I definitely do. Dorothy, Dorothy, I go two to three hours. It's my time without the kids. I hear you. And you know what, you guys? There are some thrift stores open in Santa Rosa. So I might go out tomorrow and um, I show you guys what I get to resell, mostly clothes and stuff. But I look for stuff for my house. I love decorating. And I have kind of a antique, vintage um and I found some great pottery this time. I found some um, hand um, handmade ceramic Mexican dishes, bright orange with a blue border. I found, I collect um, pitchers. I collect um, uh, vintage pitchers. And I found the sweetest little pitcher with some flowers and a gold drum for 50 cents. So I do that stuff. I mean, it just brings me so much joy. And I got some good stuff to resell. So Thank you, Babette. I appreciate you just being here and everyone here for that matter. I'm with you, James. I really appreciate it. I'm usually upbeat, but today and this week was especially challenging. Now that's gone because of all y'all. Thank you. I feel the exact same way, but I really appreciate you saying it. And I have a feeling I've got my wine. Alicia, now listen, maybe we should do a trade because you get cheap inventory and I get cheap wine. Where I live, because I'm in the heart of wine country, I get like $50, $80 bottles of wine for five, 10 bucks. So I'm just supporting my local economy. <gasps> Gotta go walk in the strip. Love you guys. Make good choices. Okay, joining JoJo. And Christy says, I can go all day shopping. I just have to remember to eat. That's huge for me because what I'll do is I'll drink a bunch of coffee be all amped up. And then after a little bit, I'm like, oh my God, I need to ground. I need food. I need water. And I need to just like sit down for a little bit. Did I do a video on this? 
where I just didn't, oh, oh, I know, it was Denali back in the day challenged me and she's like, I challenge you to go to the bins all day. <laughs> so one of my really early videos, so I did it all day at the bins. I don't wanna do that again, honestly, but I got like over a hundred pounds of clothes. I don't really go to the bins much anymore. Thrifting is hard work, Quimby. I often end up in a sweat, says Isla Dreams. Laugh out loud like today. Yeah, I definitely feel it. Okay, friends, I better wrap up because I've kept you 10 minutes over and I appreciate you being and I don't want to take advantage of all your time. Sarah Lee says, I appreciate you all. I appreciate you, Sarah Lee. We've had some nice connections on Insta. Christy says, I went to a thrift store and found a beautiful mirror I'm keeping for the house. Oh, I love getting the house stuff because when I look online for that stuff, and I don't, I, I like some mix of modern new stuff, but I'd rather find the real deal, you know, like everyone has. Anyway, um, that stuff's expensive. Like I order a lot of stuff on chopgoodwill.com and the pottery and stuff that I like, it goes up pretty high. So when I can actually go find it for a few bucks, I, I just love it. Mom, if you are up for thrifting tomorrow, and you want to go even for an hour or two, um, we can go somewhere local. Salvation Army's open finally. And another, um, I don't think any of the Goodwills are open, but we could do something. Okay, my friends, I just love you so much. I appreciate you so much. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit that like on the way out. That helps me. If you want to help me even more, go over to my new channel, The Grateful Queen, The Grateful Therapist. Watch some of those videos. Leave some comments. That'll help me get that one going. Who doesn't love this reselling family? I do. Maybe we'll see you Sunday night. So keep um, that in mind if my mom feels like going on for a little bit. Hello, Bella. I'm so glad you commented and joined us. It's so great to see a newer face. Take care and have a good night, everyone. Kelly Schaffner was here this whole time. Always a fun Friday night with you, Quemby, and all the awesome peeps. Thank you, Kelly Schaffner, for getting me turned on to the Stitch Fix. We'll see how this next box goes. Love y'all, says Christy. Have a great weekend, says Karen at Red's Revival. Everyone, and feel free to stop by my closet and make an offer at Red's Revival. She's got a great closet. I've been over there. Bye, everyone. Be well, everyone, says James. And today is a good day to have a good day. That's my takeaway. Was that from Mr. Rogers? But um, I don't know. He was great. All right. Night, guys. I'll see you maybe Sunday and definitely next Friday. Bye.